Do you feel alone in your journey in endo? Well, I know exactly how you feel. And what I've done is I've taken all the tips and hints that I've learned along the way and I put them into a course. You can check it out at allthingsendo.ca and then it'll allow you access into our private Facebook group, Root Canal Like an Endodontist, and there you can find even more secrets and be part of a group that we're journeying through endo all together. We'll have weekly updates, we've got some live cases, and anything you can imagine we could probably do in there. So, or check us out at allthingsendo.ca. Hey, this is Ash from All Things Dentistry, the place where we're passionate about sharing those unwritten hints and tips of dentistry. Well, today's a really interesting case, and it's been a couple of weeks, I placed calcium hydroxide, you know, I'll let the cat out of the bag. This tooth right here, tooth number 21, had a root canal about a year ago, or two years ago, and was still sensitive to cold. Now, I've had that experience with multi-rooted teeth were potentially, I just had a case actually, I should show the radiograph right now, where the distal lingual canal, just like the apical three millimeters was still sensitive, was missed, or actually was calcified, but the patient still had sensitivity to cold. That totally blows my mind. This is the same, very similar situation. Both these teeth were root canal previously about a year ago. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, as, I, as I'm talking, we're just gonna go through the clinical exam. So I'm just palpating here for any, any apical pain, alveolar pain. And so we'll just go through the whole percussion sensitivity. So this tooth still has cold sensitivity. It's unbelievable. And she can't eat anything cold, including ice cream, which I suggested she didn't, but you know, everyone loves a bowl of ice cream here and there. So nothing is percussion sensitive. What we're gonna do next is, let's see if we're gonna do cold tests or probing. Usually it's probing, but maybe we'll do cold. What do you think? Oh, we're gonna probe. So we're just looking to see if there's any isolated probing depths. So the next is gonna be cold test. And it just blew my mind because, you know, normal, normal, no sensitivity, sensitive to cold, post root canal. Okay, let's get cracking here. So we're just gonna use our endo ice, cold, 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 and that's it. So let's go ahead and dive in. What are we gonna do? We're going to retreat actually both of these cases and we'll see why, I think, why we had sensitivity cold. So what I'm doing here is, let me back up. So I skipped ahead really way too far. And what we're gonna do is I've numbed up, an old mentor taught me years ago that if you wanna numb up anterior teeth, what we do is I'll normally numb up around the canine and slowly what happens is the anesthesia works its way mesially. And then slowly I'll numb up, you know, kinda of a little bit by the canine, a little bit by the inside, the lateral incisor, a little bit by the central incisor. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the palate. But to do the palate, rather than just, you, there's two ways. You can either place pressure, and I do it both ways, depending on the patient. And yeah, it looks not nice. But actually what happens is that the buccal gingiva becomes anesthetized, and I'm slowly making my way through the papilla. A, a just I'm grazing the osseous crest, and I'm applying anesthesia to the palate. And you can see, how do I know it's working? Well, it's starting to blanch. You just saw it right there on the, I'm just doing an exam everywhere else. So you can see the tissue starting to blanch, telling me that, okay, well, it's starting to numb up. And if you've ever had an incisive injection in your life, put it in the comments below because nine times out of 10, it's a memorable experience. It's pretty painful. So then what I'll do is once the tissue's blanched, I know that we have some anesthesia, and then I'll take my anesthetic needle and I'll just place it into that tissue and just expand kind of the area of the anesthesia. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna place a 2A clamp and the anatomy of our teeth is such that that 2A actually fits. So that's pretty helpful. So we place our rubber dam, we get everything sorted out here. We're gonna place our Aura Seal around the palatal. And if you're not familiar with using Aura Seal, I highly recommend some sort of secondary seal. And what this does is it prevents our sodium hypochlorite. If you watched these videos before, you know what I'm gonna say, it prevents the, our caustic disinfectant solutions from going in the patient's mouth, decreasing our efficiency because it tastes like heck. And it keeps the bacteria from the mouth out of our disinfected canals. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna access through those, the access uh, spots before. Here, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, this is or seal. And I find that if you place just a little bit of water on it, it makes it stick to the tooth and then you're set. So what we're gonna do is we're using a number two round long surgical burr in my high speed. And we're just gonna remove composite. I start, so you see here, she shook her head no. And I just, so what I do, this is all endos actually. And I find it kind of builds confidence with myself to make sure the patient's numb and also them. 
So we access, they do a little head shake, yes or no, if they feel pain. And then we're gonna go dry. And I'm literally just removing that composite. Now, composite removing in teeth can be fairly arduous if you've never done it before. If you are a dental enthusiast, I really, I'm grateful you're here because, um, I don't know, this is just not exciting. But if you're a dental student or a dentist, I'm grateful you're here because if you've done this, it's hard to tell without lots of experience, and that's all it is, experience, what is tooth and what's restoration. So I find that when I go dry, sometimes, or I'd say 80% of the time, it's helpful under the scope because you can see the difference between dentin and composite. So I'm literally going into that composite. I'm tracking, not only am I tracking the depth of the burr, I'm not only, I'm also tracking the depth of where the shank changes on the burr, but I'm also tracking the angulation because the last thing you want to do in there is go out the side of the tooth. Many years ago, I'm just going slow and boom, I'm telling you that's pink gold right there, gutta percha. My decision was we're going to access into the gutta percha, get into there, and then let's get into this gutta percha and then we'll sort of, we'll refine our accesses after. Okay, so now we're into where the gutta percha is in both cases. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna refine with a long diamond. So this is a long diamond burr, it's medium. It doesn't, you know, you can use whatever you want. Um, you can use ultrasonics, you can use slow speed. I'll just use this and I think I slowed it down. It's an electric hand piece, slowed it down to about say 60 to 100,000 RPM. And we're just gonna go dry. My dental assistant should be blowing air in here. This has been a few weeks since I've done this case. And I'm literally just removing the composite restoration for the, at the mean, at you know, at, to start. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up like a classic access opening like you see in the textbooks. And the reason why I do that is my experience has been is that oftentimes there's pulpal remnants remaining from the initial endo. Everyone's afraid. I don't know if it's because of Instagram. Maybe it's because of my own youtube -gram, that we're afraid to make our accesses a little bit larger to remove, you know, any material like pulp tissue. And that is really essentially what stains teeth. Now, she doesn't have any staining here. But it's only been a year, or so we're just gonna we're gonna extend not too much, very subtly, and we may use I can't remember if we're gonna use our gates, not our gates. Holy smokes, I've used that for years. Use our Munzberg just to kind of go into the little nooks and crannies where the pulp horn exists, so we don't remove a lot of the coronal tissue, but we remove some of that where the pulp horn is. And there were some remnants, I think, in this case. Certainly, have a number of cases where there's remnants, and we just remove those. And it actually makes a significant difference, especially if there is staining. I know that uh, I've done a number of endos on young young kids, just with because the pulp horn is really large, and the tooth changed like dramatically color just because we removed those the, the you know the pulp horn the pulp tissue necrosis and then turns dark. Okay, so what we're gonna do is now I'm gonna take my mud spur. We're gonna spin out some of that gutta percha. We're just using it at, at 12,000 RPM, we're just gonna spin some of that out. And then what we'll do is we'll take our wave on gold and spin out our wave on gold, spin out the gutta percha. So we're using friction here just to kind of heat it up and kind of get it out. But there's so much gutta, you know, the pulp chamber was so, or the pulp, the or the canal was so large that this little burr just really was fairly ineffective to remove uh, any of that gutta percha to heat it up. So at some point I'm like, okay, I've had enough. So it's a little bit composite. I'm just gonna remove all that composite, make sure there's no pulpal remnants under it like I was just talking about. So what I've been doing now is I've been using my Wave and Gold medium. I'll spin it reverse at around 1000 RPM. So when it spins in reverse, it's actually cutting. And once we warm up enough of that gutta percha, it'll just spin it all the way out. But you need to get it because there's a lot of gutta percha here. So it may take a little bit of time to heat that up. I use the medium because it's a little bit thicker than it's a, it's a much thicker file than the primary. And let's speed this up a little bit more here. Once I get down the canal to a certain point, then it starts spinning right around. So that tooth did not do it that well. Watch this one. This one will be, this is exactly the what I want to show you. There we go. So it spins it right out. So we're going to take it a little bit further down and it'll spin it right out. No problem. And I find that, you know, it's a mix. It's a balance between using files to remove gutta percha. This is a single canal, so it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Uh, we didn't use chloroform, so what we're going to do here is we're using our apex locator to see how far the length we're getting. We didn't, I didn't use chloroform in this sitting, but I might when we go back, just to make sure we don't have any remainder of gutta percha or sealer. So we're going to take our wave on gold primary in regular length. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to cheat. So you didn't see this here. 
So I'm going to take my Apex locator. I'm actually going to put it onto the file and I'm going to go right to one red bar. And we're going to stop. Yep, you saw it here. So I find that in cases where I believe that it's kind of a, it's a sense, a kind of a feeling. So it's like, okay, we've got patency, probably there's patency. You can see I'm looking at how much, where it's cutting on the flutes. I'm like, okay, let's do this. We'll try it. And I'll do that with some retreats. So we're going to take that all the way to length. And we're just double checking here. And then we'll do the other tooth. And you can see the reason why it's doing the shaking is because it's in reciprocation mode. I want to take a second here just to highlight a couple of endodontists that are online. And one is Bobby Nadeau, and he's Canadian. And he has, this is his Instagram here. He's incredible. He does combing guided, dynamic navigation, endo. He does a lot of stuff. If you check him out, you'll learn a ton. You'll just be amazed. It almost, it, it takes you to the next level of endo. He's almost like, I'd say like Yoda. And the next endo dentist that I want to highlight online is Sunil, Dr. Sunil Natakar. He is another endo Yoda. Let's use that term. Amazing guy. He's got an, an endo course called Endodontics Refined. And if you can check it out, he does a, a series every year and it's absolutely heavy and incredible and in learning. So check both of those gentlemen out. And boom, there we have our working length. Boom, right on the money. All right. So I've got my working length. That was pretty simple. And obviously, you know, every situation is different. Don't do that unless you've got a lot of experience and you feel comfortable because the problem is you will fracture a file, unfortunately. But that is one of the, the few things. That's one of the reasons why I love this file. So you can see I've wave on gold. So you can see here, so we've taken our large down to length and you can see, I'm wondering if, I don't know what that is, but I'm wondering if that is a piece of pulpal tissue. Is that a piece of dentin? Knowing that this file is a 45 tip, I'm not 100% confident that I'm going to be able to debride completely apical third of this tooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up to a larger size using a old school, that's right, old school hand file, a cave file. So I'm going to talk about the balanced force technique. There's not a lot of cases on the internet that really show how to enlarge in the apical portion of a case. Most of the cases online I find are driven by marketing. So it's typically one file and it'll work for everything. And unfortunately that's not the case. So using the balanced forces technique is essentially a simple way to use a hand file conservatively to enlarge in the apical portion at your working length. So, you know, one mil or half a millimeter away from the apical constriction to open it to a certain point to create a ledge essentially and also ensure we have adequate debridement. In this case, I'm trying to debride and make sure that we don't have any remnant pulpal tissue that's causing the cold sensitivity. So the balanced forces technique was designed for taking stainless steel files around curves, but we can apply it in this situation. It was created in 1970s by Jim Rohn, and it's a really simple technique it's essentially a quarter turn clockwise with your file, with your K file, and then a three quarter turn counterclockwise putting apical pressure. Now you're gonna have to practice. If you're not familiar with it, go ahead and read the article in the description box below. Practice on some extracted teeth. It's a really effective way to get files quickly to the apical, you know, to the apical constriction or wherever you want them to go without watch winding and creating unneeded ledges. So really my buddy Les taught me you know, the apical stop preparation. And it's been super helpful. I've used it in essentially my entire career. And using a larger file, a conservative, so we're not enlarging any of the coronal third of this tooth, we're just enlarging the apical portion. And you can see when we take that file out, I'm looking to see if what's on there. Is that pulpal tissue? Is it more cement? It's certainly not gutta percha. Is it dentin? And it looks like from you know, when I was doing the case myself, it looked like there's a bit of pulpal tissue on there. And, you know, when I called, text the, texted the patient two weeks later, all our cold sensitivity is gone. And I find that this is a missing art in endodontics that if you're going to be doing, you know, central incisors, lateral incisors, even sometimes canines, palatal canals of upper teeth, upper maxillary molars, mandibular molars, when you have resorption, especially necrotic teeth, this is one technique you may need to add to your 
Armamentarium is just using its balance force technique with a large hand file. It doesn't take very long, maybe two minutes. And then what you can do is you increase your confidence that you've cleaned and brided. And you see there's more, sorry, there's more. As I look at this, I'm watching the video, there's more material coming out of that apical portion of that canal. And what it does is it increases your confidence that indeed you've tried your best to debride that larger canal. And it also prevents your gutta percha, your gutta percha cone from sailing out the apex because now you've created an apical stop. Okay, so after copious sodium hypochlorite rinsing, we're going to dry with our paper points and we're gonna actually use them to confirm our working length. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our calcium hydroxide. This is just UltraCal XS. And then we're gonna restore and have the patient come back and finish this case. So thanks so much for joining me and I'm super grateful you're here and you made it all the way to the end. Anyways, uh, we're gonna be having some upcoming cases. I've actually got uh, a number of guided cases that I'd love to do and we're gonna walk through the whole work through workflow. Also, you know, if I can get some time, we've got this endo then zirconia crown placement and uh, there's a couple tips in there that I've learned. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I'm grateful you're here and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers.